Karen and Mark, people that are far away. If, I, if I'm not audible, just point up or something like that. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I frequently get asked, where did all this stuff come from? Where did you get this? How did you accumulate this lot of collectibles? Well, it's, it's not something that happened overnight or last week or a secret store that has all this stuff. It takes a lot of time. I came here in the early 70s, and Kathy came to Tell City for Perry County in the early 80s. So all that time, we've been kind of accumulating things. Uh, right off the bat, nothing is so insignificant that it's not a relic. Like this is uh, Luring of Evansville had a lumber company, but they also had a uh, store in Candleton and Tell City. This is a fly swatter, of course. <laughs> you wouldn't believe what I had to pay for that at auction. Probably 30 bucks, and that was 10 years ago. So it was ridiculous. Uh, a lot of our images, a lot of our images came from postcards, stereo views, cabinet cards. Sorry, Chris. This is an example of a mid-century mid stereo camera. It's characteristic two lenses about the same distance as your eyes apart. And from this, you were able to get <coughs> stereo views like this, which could be viewed with a stereo viewer like this. You just put it in there and then adjust it to suit your eyes like this. But luckily the photographers were so skilled that they could take an image 100 years ago, more than that, and crystal clear. And Kathy has been able to incorporate these in her books. So this is one, one thing, the stereo view. The cabinet card, I'll just go with the postcard. Postcards, the best for us are the real photos. Uh, you can't see them, but feel free to come on up here after the presentation and you can look at them. This is the Majestic Theater in Canelton, about 1910. It was located in uh, one of the co cotton mill blocks. The whole block <coughs> near the cotton mill was uh, occupied by the, the people that worked there. The cotton mill built these, like housing. And uh, this one was occupied partially by this majestic theater. And it's got, oh, signs out in front, what's silent movies, of course, back then. Real photo, again, crystal clear. This is the uh, uh, Conoco Station in Canelton, about 1920, 25, something like that. Be sure to come up and look at it. Crystal clear. Kathy's got it enlarged in one of our books, one or two. <coughs> and then another popular thing was the cabinet card. It's just a, they could take a picture and put it on a postcard, or they could put it, enlarge it and put it on a cabinet card like this. This is a Tell City Athletic Club, about uh, 1900. All identified. Oh, wow. Kathy will explain well how she gets that. And then so of our images come from glass. <laughs> glass negatives and tin types. Photos on tin. Uh, and that led to, the, the images led to us wanting to have objects that uh, were associated with the images. And to those who have the book know that just about every image has some type of a relic with it. It just that well, from, from teaching, I know visual aids are worth everything. If you have something that goes with the image and it's not just me talking or you just reading, if you have an image and a relic, that really goes together. But most of the relics early in this presentation were from bottling companies. This is an early top bottle, Tell City Bottling Works, Frank Schneider. It's a blob top or a touchy, and you open it by just popping that 
down into the contents. And it uh, was carbonated and they would pop. So they started calling them pop, pop bottles. Oh. That's an early one. Well, I'll be gone. <laughs> so I started watching for Tell City bottles. Early ones were cloudy and chipped and everything, but over the 50 years that I've been collecting, I have some that are unopened, all from Tell City Bottling Works, mostly coal. Also, the dairies. Everybody, all the natives are familiar with Ganau Dairy. These are pure cream products, also. They were bought out by Canal. Dairy bottles, advertising all over it, Tell City, Indiana. Uh, the breweries and uh, spirits got involved. The uh, Tell City Brewery, I don't know if they gave these away to uh, dealers, or, but they're made in Germany for the Tell City Brewing Company. It shows the brewery there, and it says on the bottom, Tell City Brewing Company, Tell City, Indiana. I got that about 30 years ago, it cost 190. 30 years ago, when I was teaching, no money. This is a advertising fan, Sam Connor, beer, liquor, and wines. Candleton, Indiana, 2nd and Washington Street. Just an insignificant fan, but they use it for advertising. Churches were uh, air conditioned or anything. Uh, the liquors, the spirits. We've got uh, also, this is a little called a scratch jug, probably a Cannelton Pottery Company product. And uh, Ferd Becker <coughs> had them made to give away to his best customers. It's scratched in there, compliments of Ferd Becker, Tell City, Indiana. Real rare, especially in this condition, no chips. And gave them away, like I said, maybe at Christmas or to his good customers. And then later, Mr. Becker's sons, Becker brothers, opened a nice store down on where Lincoln Hills is now. Becker brothers, and they gave away this brush. Becker, Becker brothers, Tell City, Indiana, that's the son of Ferd Becker. The sons of Ferd Becker. More soda bottles. We got, uh, the Orange Crush 1947 calendar for Coca Cola. One thing leads to another, and you have to have a bottle unopened that matches that. So, you know, it's just contagious. You start with one thing, and one thing leads to another. Here's a bill from Chero Cola to a Tell City customer. And then, of course, I've got a couple of Chero Cola bottles in really perfect, pristine condition. Uh, the Bonnard brothers in Tell City had a cigar factory. This is a cigar box. Individual wrappers for their product. It says Bonnard brothers, Tell City, Indiana. After I had that box, then I had to have a cigar mold to go with it. These two halves go together to mold the cigars. Tokens. Tokens were a big method of advertising, kind of like coupons today, only these were reusable. Uh, I've got all the Tell City tokens, Candleton, and then out in the county, Troy. And, but they were, you could use them over and over. You give them to your, like if it was, if you had a bar, you'd give them a token after they paid their bill. Good for one beer. Uh, this is Krogman, Krogman whiskey. Uh, if you wanted a bottle of their slop, or not a bottle, a barrel, a barrel of their slop, you'd go to the office and you'd buy, probably, I don't think these were given away, a token of one gallon, five gallons, or 10 gallons of slop for your livestock. Then you take it out to the uh, storage place where that was and redeem it. They're good for one dance, good for a drink, 
good for everything, you know, but they'd go back and forth, circulate like coins. Whereas tokens, one time use and it's done. Plus they carried them around in their pocket, they put their change out, there'd be this advertising first thing they see in the morning when they put their money in the in the drawer. Uh, here's a little advertising thermometer, Ernie's Garage in Tell City. He was at uh, 723 Reuben Street, which by itself, but if you have the photograph of that what goes with it, mm, just really works for the, a page in our book. Uh, Tell City Flowering Mill, these are some, a collection of things that they use to advertise their products. This is a flower bag folded up, a uh, skilled framer did it for me. <laughs> oh, it's Kathy. <laughs> and then these are, uh, Bullet pencils are called. About World War II, they were really popular. Each one had a pencil inside it, and you could take the lid, the top of the bullet out, turn it around, and have a pencil. Same thing, those would sit on the desk and get your attention and make you want to buy flour from Tell City Flouring Mills. This is a little hand, a little aluminum. You spin it to determine, see who pays. You spin it and it spins around. And, determines whether you pay or not. That's a little key fob for your uh, keys. Uh, Sunlight Hotel did a lot of advertising in Carrollton. Here's an 1898 advertising envelope. You can look at it when you come up. Advertising their store. This is a little uh, advertising token pocket mirror. So it'd be redeemable for, I think, 10 cents at the bar. And then a woman would carry it in her purse and how do I look? Oh, I'm going to go down to the down to the Sunlight Hotel, have a drink or a meal, you know. And something insignificant is the book of matches, billiards and bowling in an atmosphere of refinement. That was a candle. It's still that way. <laughs> then Gerber's, Gerber's in Tell City and Candleton also did a lot of advertising. This is a celluloid W.J. Gerber record cleaner. It's kind of felt on one side, but uh, that'd be on your record player all the time. You're gonna go down to Gerber's to shop. This is a little W.J. Gerber advertising thermometer. Cute little thing. And this is a child's drinking cup. <coughs> Gerber's, Perry County's oldest and largest furniture and appliance store. And of course, maybe early I had a chipped one, but now I have a perfect one. <laughs> After 50 years. And the last thing, I think, <coughs> the last thing is something, uh, Chris and I got, there were two of them at this auction, Mayor, Mayor Kale, and uh, each of them had a box, original box with it. Really unbelievably scarce to have that, the bank, and the key. But you pull this thing back, cock it. Now sometimes it, it hits it right into the bank, other times you press on the astronaut's head and it shoots it into the bank. The bank, this is uh, Citizens National Bank, Tell City, gave them away probably for opening an account of $5 or something like that, or if, if the parents took out a big loan, they might give this, take this home to your son, hoping that he would collect and then open an account of his own. Neat little advertising toy. And now the best part of all, Oh. <laughs> Kathy. Thank you, Mike.